Hello everybody, it's Danny Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. And guys, just like I told you, we're going to be heading over to Pecan Grove. We've got the Cub tractor all loaded up here. Uh, guys, <laughs> this is the system here that I purchased. And not knowing anything about any of this except the fertilizer part of it, it's been a chore. This was sold to me as a 172 planter. Well, I just took for granted that's what it was. And when I started putting it together and putting it on here, I realized this thing just didn't look right. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I couldn't figure out how to make the planter wheel pick up and down back there and all that kind of stuff. And I got to doing my research and I done bought a book on a 172 planter, got it ordered and got it in here and was ready to roll. Come to find out I got a 174. Well, the 174 is altogether different than the 172. Come to find out, lots of parts were missing. And I'm in a crunch mode. We got to plant corn. And I don't have time. I went online looking, thinking I could find stuff and have it express, express shipped and st stuff like that. I couldn't even find it. So what we realized was this gear, this right here was missing. So I took this off of another piece of uh, farm all planter parts and all that and got it to work right here. So I was okay about that. Well, then come to find out this whole planter base bracket system in here, this part or the part that this sits on was turned, somebody put it together backwards and had the seed tube way up here. So I had to disassemble every piece of that, put it all back together in the opposite direction so that the seed tube is in the back back here. Well, when I get ready to hook the seed tube up, this is square. My seed tube is round. Every I have not found one thing that tells me how that's supposed to hook up. So I just, through my ingenuity, <laughs> and I know guys don't laugh at me, but I just bent some wire around this right here, heavy gauge wire, and I made a loop come up over this because this has a slot in it. And I took a carriage bolt and put in that, and I've tightened that thing down right there, and I'm just hoping and praying that it stays on there. But then I have these two metal seed tubes. That was what they were sold to me as, is seed tubes. Well, I went to put this one on here. Well, it's about a foot too long. And I was like, oh, my word. And for what I had to pay for them, I was like, I hate to run it, but I got to have a seed tube. And I couldn't find out anything anywhere about any kind of special seed tubes or anything like that. There's just no information out there that I can find. And this is where you guys can help me out. Because, guys, I'm just, I had to cut my good long metal seed tube off back here and pop rivet it all back together, drill it put a carriage bolt in it, bolt it to the back of this planter system here because there's a slot back in there. So I bolted it to it. I've got it in there and I'm hoping that it'll just drop the seeds in there like it's supposed to. Well, in my endeavor to try to figure out why this all this wheel system back here wasn't picking up and down, I realized the 174 has a plunger rod that hooks up here and comes all the way back down to here and has this bracket system here. Well, I had to take and take a piece of 3 8 inch stock that I had, bend it to fit around this, take a die, thread this thing over here, and put me some nuts and washers on it, and I had to take an old piece of scrap steel I had laying around and drill it. Then I had to drill this hole up here, which took me for a while. Then I was like, okay, what am I going to use for a plunger rod? So, thank you, Keith. Uh, Keith had sent me some old Cub Farm All parts. I was able to take one of these rods right here that goes on the back back here, and I tried to bend this hook part on around. Guys, that thing is some kind of hard steel, and I bent it a little bit, but and whether that's going to even work up there or not, I don't know. But I used this system, this system, and this up here, and I used that rod. I didn't want to cut it off, so it's still sticking out pretty long back here. I'm hoping that it, as I lift it and raise it, it don't get in the way of this seed tube and hang up and, you know, hurt something. But I just didn't want to cut it off because I don't like running stuff, you know. 
uh, and I'm hoping that someday I can find all this. I did find a manual that I was able to download and found out this is some kind of a plunger rod system here. Uh, I don't know if I have it adjusted right. I have no clue about anything. I've got a bolt right up in here, uh, right there, that does an adjustment on this blade and rear wheel system back here. I have no clue how it's supposed to be adjusted until I actually put it in the soil and see if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. I, I've got a feeling I'm going to be spending a while just making adjustments. The, the books all showed this bolt pattern here in the center hole on this. So I put I went ahead and put it in the center hole. Uh, I don't even know if that's right. And then I've done lots and lots of research to figure out, I was like, well, I've got this. How am I going to open a row up in front of it? Well, I did find a, a document that showed putting this uh, curved bar here in the front of this and putting your uh, small bull tongue out in front of it there and then taking your seed tube there was two there's about three or four different ways they showed doing this you could take your seed tube and mount it to your put an extra long bolt back here and mount it back here to your little rod that goes on your seed tube so that it dumps out fertilizer right here behind this in the down in that deep furrow or I could have took another one of these clevises and mounted it right on the side right here and I have a another plow system that goes down here that this tube fits down in but the tube was too long to fit right here up close so being as I couldn't put it up here too close I, I I would have rather put the fertilizer over to the side deep in the ground but I couldn't because the seed tube was I mean well they call it a seed tube it was just too long so I got that hooked up and I've got it all in there centered up and everything guys there is no detailed 174 on the internet that I could find anybody on YouTube or anything that did any kind of camera work that was worth even looking at. So guys, that's why I'm doing a detailed thing around on this showing you each individual parts because I couldn't find anything online that was worth looking at. Now, this is not the original. I have the original to go on this and I started to put it back on it, but I was like, I'll just go ahead and use this one. Um, this is a a remanufactured deal I guess you would call it I have the original and I probably should have used it but here I just adjust the fertilizer right here you you undo this wing nut and you move this lever forward or backwards and that allows for the amount of fertilizer that goes out through the hopper which falls into the tube and goes down there now the seed thing I thought for sure I had a corn seeding plate which I don't it just says large seed on my plate. I have several plates that just said large seed. So, guys, I don't know how thick it's going to sew it. I, I just I don't have any clue. Um, you know, you just pop the lid back on this. You drop your seeds down in there. And it, I don't know what the spacing is going to be. I have no clue. I went online and tried to figure out that plate and the spacing and stuff like that. And what I came up with was... I found it says, well, if you're using a 724 tire and a number such and such a plate, then your seed will be spaced this far apart. If you're using a number 8 dash such and such tire, then your seed will be spaced this far apart using that same plate. Or if you're using number 9 dash so and so tire, then your seed will be spaced this far apart. And I'm like, I'm like, this is old equipment. What's the... What's up with all this calculating and all this kind of stuff? I said, just just tell me, you know, it's like an old Covington planter. You pull it behind you and it, you know, you know how far apart because of the way the plates are on it. And I was like, this is the most complicated thing I think I've ever ran across to be old. Um, and everyone Wanda was laughing at me. I These told her, people I, know more than we know. smarter than we were, you know? I think that's why they simplified all this stuff because everybody got dumber, I reckon. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's smarter than I am, but I'm fixing to head out to Pecan Grove with it. We're going to go over there, and we're going to see if we can set this thing down, and we can figure out if it's even going to work. The thing that's concerning me is this rod I made right here. I don't have this in tightened down yet because I'm going to let it down on the ground so I can get some pressure on that spring and tighten it up so it'll hold down pressure. Right here where I bent it, I couldn't bend it in a full circle. 
and I don't know if it's going to pop up off of this bowl or not, so I, I don't know yet. Um, it's going to be a learning experience, so it may take me a little while to get it all figured out, but in the meantime, it's we're just going to sit and learn together because there's no videos out there about any of this stuff in detail where you can learn anything. So my mission is to plant the corn, to do a video, and show what adjustments I made, why I made them, and hopefully we can all learn from this. So you guys who love farm alls and farm all equipment and stuff like that, I'm kind of like uh, Joey from JT West is now. I'm kind of like wanting maybe just to get the fast hitch system to go on the back of this thing and just get me a planter that just snaps into the back of it because... That takes away all the fun of spending so much money and time uh, of re fixing old parts. I know, I know. But I love this. I love the mechanical look of this because it looks sophisticated. Now, there's a ton of holes in this right here. There's, there's all this specialty stuff back in the day you could order to go on this. They had these wings that you could put on here that move the dirt out. They have a different system you can put on here that flattens the top of a bed out real smooth. I mean, depends on if you're planting on flat ground, raised beds. I mean, what I was able to find out, there's all this information in there. And I'm just like blown away. I'm like... Man, you could do anything with this tractor. I mean, anything. It just depends on what you want to do. You could just do it with it. Bottom line is this. We've got the opening plow here. We're dropping the fertilizer out. When the fertilizer falls out, we've got this apparatus right here that kind of narrow and then it opens up. Seeds fall down right here, drops the seed down in the ground. Okay, we've got this apparatus right here that uh, slides the dirt over to cover the seeds up. Now, the book says you're supposed to have two of these. When I called a company, they said, nah, one's all you need. So I was like, okay. So they only had one, so they sent me one. And, and then this back here is your wheel that actually compresses the soil. Now, it has a groove in the middle where, where the seeds fall. It don't pack the soil where the seed's at. It packs it on the outside edges and kind of shoves it toward the seed and pushes it down in on it. So that's the whole system in a nutshell right there. We're going to see if we can make this happen, guys. We made it here safely. Yay. Okay, guys, well, over here, we found this natural indention down in the ground that put my truck up high, the trailer down low. I probably could just back it off of here but uh, I went ahead and laid the ramps out anyway, because at least that way I get a long, straight shot. Uh, we were going to fill this hole in, but I, we just decided we ain't filling this hole in. We're going to leave it like it is, because this is just too awesome right here. <laughs> Okay guys, we got our dandy corn seed here. Uh, we got some of this is uh, this drought seed. So remember we had the corn to come out of the drought. I think I'm gonna uh, take the small bag. These just come out of the freezer. Uh, I'm gonna dump them in there. I'm just gonna put a little bit in there to start with until we see how everything's gonna go.
I'm glad you're patient. Yes, I'm glad I'm Say hey, Faith. Hey, Faith. Meet my granddaughter who let a bag bust on the top and she has to pick up seed, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't know this is how I was going to be spending my morning, but it's actually quite satisfying. One seed at a time. One seed at a time, sweet Jesus. You know, Nana thinks Paul Paul's tractor's sexy. I do. <laughs> I'm really not a cub fan, you know? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> You're not a cub fan. <laughs> what the heck is wrong with oh, you, woman? I'm in a baseball cubs fan. <laughs> so overall, how'd you like it? Well, overall, she performed flawlessly. Now she's a she. She's a she. Um, I did learn something. Uh... The plates, the planter plates that go in it, you have thick ones and you have thin ones. And if you have a thin one and you don't have a spacer to go with it, all your seeds will fall out. So we had to go hunt up a thicker one. It had not the right spacing that I wanted, but uh, once I got it in there, I noticed it didn't put a seed in every one of the things coming around because the seeds were really too big for the plate. But it did put out one about every foot or so, look like. But <laughs> we won't know till it comes up. And I did go through, uh, was it three bags of seeds? I know, I, I know two and I, a half quarts, I'd say. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Two and a half quarts uh, I went through. So that's about right. How many seeds is that? Okay, two and a half quarts of seeds. How many, How many is that? How many seeds is that? A quarter of a million. A quarter of a million? Mm-hmm. It's and a lot. she learned how to pick up seeds one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was that was interesting. Yep, <laughs> taught her patience. Um, anyway, it performed flawlessly. Um, some of you guys who know more about this than I do, is this right or wrong? It looks to me like when I watched it being used, it was wrong. It looks like it ought to be on the other side, and the dirt ought to be being pushed in this away. But all the pictures showed it going on this way. So I don't know for sure. Um, I'm going to have to let some of you guys who know more about this than I do kind of give me some information on that. But uh, to be honest with you, it performed flawlessly. I planted that whole field with no issues. I mean, I was, what, 15 minutes? Uh, about 15 minutes. I planted that whole field. Fertilized. Fertilized, planted, covered, everything. I mean, all the adjustments that I had done ahead of time by just looking at it and kind of guessing the depth of this versus that back there, 
wondering if my rod was going to work that I put on there. I mean, I washed it when I picked it up and let it down. Everything preformed flawlessly. Okay, guys, we got it all planted. Now, it's actually, I'm a little bit surprised at how it worked out. And this is thanks to JT. At JT so, West. At JT West, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, or Joey. Let's just call him Joey, not JT. That's his T's for Tasha. Um, I met Joey because he gave me the, uh, uh, we call them bull tongs, to go on the back back there, plow points. It gives it the illusion that it's on a raised bed. With no tractor marks. Yeah, with marks. no tractor marks or anything. Now, the, guys, you're going to have to forgive me. The rows aren't straight. <laughs> <laughs> I see uh, that little hump little in there. There's little wobbles in it here and there, but my cub, I have a bad spindle on the front that's been welded. Whoever had it for me welded it, and I've got to sawzall all that off or something other than get a new one. But it makes it a little difficult because sometimes it wants to wander on you, and it's got slack in it. But I'm going to get that fixed one of these days. But nevertheless, when the corn comes up, I'll be able to plow it and you won't know the difference once I plow it or cultivate it, should I say. Um, but In the I'm, dirt. And guys, I'm telling you, I'm amazed. Now, I will say the 140 farm all has it over the cub as far as one thing. The 140 has two levers where you can pick the back plows up and the front plows differently. And the cub, when I start off here, if I put my front plow in the ground, my back plows are way back here. And I've either got to wait and get all the way up in my row, or i got to start way back here. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the downfall of it. But nevertheless, I'm excited. I mean, it worked out really good. Uh, I got the fertilizer adjusted just right. Um, I got to get a corn planting seed plate a thick one or either i've got to get a thin one and the spacer that goes underneath it i realize that there has to be a spacer now but you got a um, year i got a year now but what we did do we took the very outside row over here and i took off the uh the seed hopper and i just made a row and fertilized it over there it's just a partial row it's just, it's just a partial row it because it didn't work out the field didn't work out really square with the trees and everything i had took up if i'd have one more tree took up i could have did it square but that one row miss wanda came back and put the gold prize yellow squash from hall's tool in there and we direct sewed yes we direct sewed that or she did i didn't but um i don't know how far apart you put them uh it's close to a foot a foot did you get the whole row done? Nope. I got to go get one more pack. Okay. So we're going to get that We're gonna get that row done. And we're going to have squash on this side. We got garlic, onions, potatoes, uh, three, four different kinds of potatoes over here. And we got blueberries in the middle. And we got tomatoes and peppers and pineapples and anything else we can put down there. We got room to put some more stuff. So, all right, guys. As I promised from... Pecan Grove, I would show you the farm all cub with the new planter system in gear all working. And I have kept my word now. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I was able to break it down for future cub owners as to the 174 planter to go on the cub. Because I'm going to tell you, I couldn't find anything out there that had any video quality that was worth even looking at. In, or anything in detail. That was my job on this one, was not necessarily the planting of the corn. It was showing in detail the 174 planter and the parts that goes with it, the parts that might be missing. Uh, you know, and I may have made a mistake because I don't know that much about it, but I do know what I figured out. And some of you guys who know more about it may have to correct me on some of the issues or give me a help out. You know, help me. Tell me where I've if you've seen something where I made a mistake, um, let me know because, hey, I want to make sure I get this thing right. Guys, one thing that really I'm a little, if you want to call it, anxious about is that I used all my Danny corn to plant this with, and I don't really have any more per se, hardly. Um, I got enough for maybe a couple more rows. So this is my Danny corn, and we're going to pray that this makes so that we have enough this year for plenty of seed to reuse and... Maybe have some to sell this year if we're okay. So 
pray with us that this field actually grows and does good. We can keep the crows out of it. We can keep the squirrels out of it. We can keep the deer out of it, squirrels and everything else out of it. We've got the bone sauce from Billy all down this side over here. We've got to come over here and put it on these trees over here now. And them down down at the end. May put it on the light pole here behind me and the light wire and stuff like that just to, as a, uh, a deterrent to see how it's going to work. And then we have, if that don't work, we have the grower solutions, eight foot tall or seven foot tall deer fencing that we'll put around it if we have to. And thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.